I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. So today is going to be about Alan Weiselberg. Alan Howard Weiselberg, born August 15, 1947, is the chief financial officer of the T organization and also co-trustee of a trust set up in 2017 for, you know, the T's. So, Alan, here's what happened. 1970s. Following college, he worked as an accountant for Fred Trump. Okay, just an accountant. 1980s, he was controller of the organization. 2000, he was named Chief Financial Officer and Vice President of Trump Hotels and Casino Resorts. He was also a board member and served a treasurer of the Donald J. Trump Foundation. 2017, he claimed in a deposition to New York in State Investigators that he wasn't aware he was a board member for at least the last 10 or 15 years. Wasn't aware he was a board member for the last 10 or 15 years. Hmm. He also handled the household expenses for the Trump family. Along with the Donald Trump, he is one of two trustees of uh, a New York-based revocable trust that in turn owns DT Connect member Corp. Only he and Trump. Okay, two. Anyway, in January 2017, the T organization announced that Weiselberg would manage the company along with Eric Trump and Donald, Donnie Jr. And then um, in 2018, a final summary of trust arrangements lists Weiselberg and Donnie Jr. as trustees and Eric just an advisor. The summary also indicated that as trustees only, Weiselberg and Jr. knew the details of the trust's finances. He's lived on Long Island since 2005. So Alan Weiselberg, let's see what's going on for you, buddy. Uh, it looks like things are heating up. So I thought I'd do this reading with some cards I actually had made. These are made out of wood. This is the company that made it, Lumen Graves. So if you want to have stuff made out of wood, uh, Google these folks, they're, they're really great. Um, and then the uh, the small, tiny, itty bitty, Rider weight Terror deck is what I'll use if I need clarifiers. We'll put that off to the side right now. So we're gonna talk about uh, Weiselberg, but I thought I'd show you these cards first of all. They put on the box pretty much what you want to have uh, within their uh, scope. And there's, there's a side of all of this that I can't show you because it identifies me too much. Okay, do you understand that? So there's parts of this that you cannot see. But I'm going to show you these cards, and I'm going to show you how we're going to use them. So Lumen Grave. So obviously, even though I have the superior uh, uh, shuffling skills that you've become so accustomed to, uh, these cards can't be shuffled in the traditional manner. These are literally pieces of wood, okay? Like balsa wood, like you might make a, a model airplane out of. But but a little bit a little bit uh, better, but not much. I mean, they're pretty they're pretty flexible. So what I can do, however, is I can move them into stacks that I can then take turns shuffling like this. And even if I if I tried hard enough, I could probably do a ripple shuffle with one or two of these stacks. But you know, it's just not worth it when you can just do this and uh, they'll shuffle perfectly fine. Now these, these to me, felt like uh, the chips, I don't know, chips that an accountant might find familiar in, in keeping track of their, you know, if you want to think about um, uh, really a, an old way of keeping track of something, say, okay, you bought this one and they bought this one and, you know, that kind of thing. So I thought this might be effective for Alan Weiselberg and to see what he, um, what's going on for him. These really smell great too. Obviously I don't really use them for, for anything. I, I, once in a while I'll take them out and look at them, consider if I'd want to color them in, but then they'd be even thicker than they are now. And I'd have to deal with maintaining that as it were off, or maybe not, maybe that'd look cool. But anyway, it's just another step that I'm not going to deal with right now. Maybe in the future that's something I'll do and it'll give it another extra patina for somebody else to deal with later on. So I hope you guys haven't cheated and try to see who I really am on the back side of these uh, little uh, tarot uh, cards. So that's what we have. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I can't really spread them out. So I need six and then I need four. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take a six out of here in some kind of random order. So let's just say 
One, two, I don't know what to do. Okay, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to shuffle these actually. And then I'll take another uh, four uh, from this. Um, when I need uh, those last four to finish that Celtic cross. That sounds like, like a plan, actually. So that's what will happen here. And I'm going to shuffle these a bit just to mix up how, and did I get six? One, two, three, four, five, four, five six. Yeah. Then uh, just to uh, let them determine how they want to come out in what order. I hope you've been able to see me uh, shuffling them. And we'll stop just about, I'm actually looking out my window instead of looking at these little cards right here. And so these will be dealt uh, just like this. And the signifier card then, as you can see now, for Alan Meiselberg, is having to leave something behind. This is the Eight of Cups. And so that's exactly what the Eight of Cups uh, speaks to, is having to leave a lot of, a lot of uh, emotional value behind. I mean, you know, he, this fella is walking away from these huge uh, trophies almost. So that's the signifier of this reading. Now the challenge to that is going to be, ah, wow, okay. So this is the Ten of Swords, and this is this fellow who's laid down and he's been stabbed in the back by ten swords. So what are swords? Swords are health, swords are uh, justice, swords are truth. Um, that's how I like to think of it. So when I do my reading, I, I imagine that's how Spirit sends some information to me. And this uh, Ten of Swords is in a dark night. So this, so walking away from all this, this value, this emotional, and, and it's painful. That's the challenge to it. It's also painful. It's not something that can be done easily. So that's the challenge to that. And the base of this reading is going to be the star. And sure enough, if you're Alan Weiselberg, in this case, you probably are the star of the show. So I think that says enough. You know, but the, well, the star is trying to balance things out. She's, she's trying to show uh, how best she is, but she, she becomes a star because she's able to keep her foot uh, on both uh, land and in the water. And I bet you no matter how much of a star Alan Weiselberg is going to be, he's going to be balancing exactly how much he tells. He's not going to tell more, I think, than he really absolutely has to, and that's the base of the reading. Then, <coughs> in the recent past, is Alan Weiselberg juggling the books. You know, these are two pentacles. This fella is having a great time, <clears throat> and it's not hard for him. Sometimes you see this juggler balancing on a log, but this fella's standing on a sandy beach. The water's a little rough, so he's glad he's not out there, and he's on the shore expertly performing this juggling and if you've seen some of these street performers they can go about their act for for quite a long time and that's what good old alan weisenberg has been doing now the sky in this <laughs> the sky in this is judgment so that's the 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 potential uh, high point for this uh, part of this reading is judgment you know what enough said then i'm going to take a sip of some uh, something here because i'm starting to get a little parched then in the near future, <clears throat> we have Alan Weiselberg as the hermit. And certainly, if, he, if he's going through all this of leaving stuff behind, getting stabbed in the back, having to be a shining star, when certainly that's not what he wants to be, juggling for however many years, the 1970s, this uh, organization's uh, mysteries, uh, judgment is upon him now in, in as high a position as it can. And sure, in the future, I'd want to be a hermit too. I just want to relax. But... We're going to take the next four cars, and uh, we're going to take this one first. And this will represent the self of Alan Weiselberg. And I'll just remind you, I'm not showing you the back of these darn um, cards because they're engraved with who I am. So let's don't get into that. The self of Alan Weiselberg is the, uh, look at this, he is the Ace of Wands. That is a great big authoritative hand of action. And it's shaking loose some of the fruit on that wand. So that's who Alan Weiselberg is. He knows where it where it all is and where it has always been. Oh yeah, he's important. Now the um, environment that is then is of the magician. Sure, that's in the environment of the magician. He has been the magician for this organization for all these years. He's had all the tools at his disposal. He's only had to do what his boss is telling him to do and that's where he is. Now the hopes and the fears then is going to be this little card right here, which is the Tower card. Look at that. And the Tower card is pretty self-explanatory. It all comes tumbling down. That's the hopes and the fears, I would say. And then the um, outcome for this is the Empress. How about that? It's a fruitful outcome. It looks like somehow there's going to be some, some salvation here. 
the Empress. Are we uh, the recipient of the Empress bounty? Is the Trump Organization the recipient? Is uh, Alan Weiselberg the recipient? The outcome of all of this is the Empress. And I'm going to go ahead and get a clarifier on that Empress to see if we can figure out uh, who that Empress is representing in this reading. We'll use these tiny little tiny little Smith uh, Rider weight cards and uh, shuffle them up just a little bit. And we'll take three cards to help clarify Alan Weiselberg's Empress final outcome in this meeting. What does that mean? Are we the Empress? Is who? Can you tell me in three cards? Let's see. Let's see. First card for clarifier is the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands. And who's been a wand in here? The wand in here so far has been Alan Weiselberg. But that still doesn't make it very clear. So that's the first clarifier card. The second clarifier card of only three is going to be feeling tied up. Really feeling bound up and restricted. And then the third card to hopefully identify that Empress over there is going to be, wow, working together. Well, all of this points to me as, as it could only be related with people associated with the Trump organization. And so I'll just go out on a limb and say that Weiselberg is going to bear the fruit of this um, nasty uh, result here. So look at that. Weiselberg, yeah, I, th I think he's going to spill as much beans as he has to, but he's going to be, in the end, the empress of this, uh, of this uh, show. Good for him, I guess. My name's Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm really glad that you did, and I'll be here again tomorrow, so ciao for now.